And joining us now is Bishop Robert Curver, who is the uh, di uh, Bishop of the Diocese of Lubbock, Texas. Thank you so much for being with us. Sure, it's my pleasure, my privilege. Um, maybe uh, if we could start off by talking about the diocese itself, uh, maybe give us a little background of Lubbock. The Diocese of Lubbock is, well, the city of Lubbock is sort of the capital of the South Plains and Rolling Plains of Texas. Often thought of to be part of the panhandle, but really we're right at the base of the panhandle of Texas, which is interesting because we're on a mesa. And so it's really a more verdant area. 80% of the grapes go into Texas bottled wines are grown in Terry County to the southwest of Lubbock. Wow. It's um, 23,000 square miles, 25 counties, a rectangle across the southern part of the panhandle. And Lubbock, which is called the hub city, is the hub city of the diocese. We extend an hour and 15 minutes northwest, two hours northeast, two and a half hours southeast and then about an hour south and an hour and a half southwest. 23,000 square miles, just about almost 137,000 Catholics in that area. But what really puts Lubbock on the map is Texas Tech University, okay. finalist in the Final Four basketball <laughs> tournament last year, and it's increased the enrollment in the university that has. Oh, wow, wow. And I know uh, we were talking beforehand to your you're a native Texan from I am. I'm, I was born and raised in Dallas, and interestingly, both of my parents uh, were born and raised in Dallas. Apparently, my, um, especially my paternal side of the family um, were among the earliest Catholics in Dallas. My great-grandfather actually constructed a carved wooden altar that was the first altar in the cathedral in Dallas. Wow. It was dismantled in the 70s, but, uh, but we have a legacy in the Dallas area. Wow. And, and we've seen an influx uh, to uh, growing communities in, in Texas overall. Have you seen an increase in, in your diocese as well? You know, it's interesting. Our diocese grows and it diminishes. It grows largely because of Texas Tech University and the Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center. Okay. And it's growing in the southern part because of the oil fields have have extended north from the, the Permian Basin oil fields, north from Midland and Odessa. On the same token though, rural America is in trouble and our young people aren't returning to the hometowns in which they grew up in. And in fact, many of our farms are operated from owners in the southwest quadrant of the city of Lubbock. And so we've got this, I call it sometimes my bipolar diocese, the city of Lubbock, is booming, but the other 24 counties are in trouble. Okay, all right. Well, and it, how long have you been the bishop here for now? It will be three years, November 21st. Yeah. So I still consider myself, I consider myself sort of an adolescent bishop. <laughs> and I think I behave that way in the eyes of some of the other bishops. <laughs> Uh, maybe if you could talk about the, the people, the people in the diocese, the people that you meet, you, you go out in. <clears throat> the people are 80% Hispanic, but I speak less Spanish in the Diocese of Lubbock than I did in the upper middle class parish that I was pastor of in North Dallas because they are multi-generational Hispanic people. Um, we've got some migrants, but not so many anymore because the cotton fields have been mechanized. Um, but boy, some of the nicest people in the world. Without exaggeration, I think fewer than 10 times have I heard a horn honk on the streets of Lubbock. You just don't do that. You treat other people well. You get in conversations in the restaurants and on, in the stores. Just some of the nicest people I've ever been exposed to. Okay. Don't travel to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to handle the honking. <laughs> um, Maybe you could, uh, if you could talk too about, I, I, I know, and it's been in the news too, um, um, the death penalty, uh, and, and in Texas especially, um, but maybe if you could talk about the, the efforts that, that, that the church is, is um, leading in, in those efforts to, to sort of get rid of the death penalty. Well, I must say that in regard to the, the death penalty, I'm embarrassed to be a native Texan, um, and I really wish something could happen, as do all of the bishops of Texas. The Texas Catholic Conference of Bishops, the TCCB as we're known, is a very strong state conference of bishops. And we do a lot um, speaking with one voice and we are working very hard. We've got a terrible case right now of possible 
innocence of somebody about to be executed. Their DNA evidence is pretty um, clear that he did not commit the crime. And so the TCCB and other Catholic entities and a lot of non-Catholic entities are really struggling to try to grant a stay of execution. I must say that in the month of October, I believe there were four stays of execution. Okay. So I think we're making some progress. But as you know, West Texas is still, well, Texas, since I'm from West Texas, okay. Texas is still sort of cowboy country and um, you just, you know, it, it's a hard sell. But we're, we as the bishops of Texas are working very hard to try to reduce the number of executions and eventually to eliminate the death penalty in Texas. That's great. And I know you've only been a bishop for three years there too, but maybe um, what would you like to see in the future, some of your hopes as you continue on in your role as bishop of the diocese? One of the biggest hopes I have is that we can continue to evangelize and send forth as missionary disciples our young people, the young church as we call them. And in the Lubbock area, because of Texas Tech University with almost 40,000 students, over 6,000 of which we believe are Catholic, we have a great opportunity to be a voice of Catholicism with, for, and through those young people. And so I wanna see the young church emerge, and that's gonna be a multicultural church. Multilingual church, too, I think. Yeah. There's great hope and promise. West Texas has not been heavily impacted by the abuse crisis, and we're fortunate. My diocese was founded in 1983, and that's a blessing. We struggle financially, but I think there's great hope moving into what I'm fond of saying the third decade of the 21st century. Well, it's great talking to you, Bishop. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being with us.